In this PyScript tutorial, I'm going to be using TradingView's scripting language to build out indicators and then develop them into real trading strategies. We're going to look at how to get started with PyScript, go through some code examples, and then backtest some strategies, and then talk about how to move these into production so that we can fit our trading strategy around current market conditions. Okay, so when you first log into TradingView, you're going to be presented with a chart, something like this. This is the S&P 500 on the daily time frame. And the first thing we're going to do is move this over to whichever market we're most familiar with. So if you're a Forex trader, that might be the Euro US dollar. If you're a stock trader, then move it to whatever stock you're most familiar with. For me, I'm most familiar with Bitcoin US dollar market. So that's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So search Bitcoin US dollar in this top corner. And I'm going to use it, move it across to the one hour time frame. So we have a little bit more detail here. I'm going to zoom all the way out. Now what I want to capture is the, the start of this most recent bull market from around the kind of 15th, 16th of December, all the way up to the current date. For a little bit of background, we've had kind of two and a half waves of this bull cycle. And I'd suggest market conditions are kind of getting into the mid to late stages of it. So now we've got the basics set up. Let's go ahead and open up the Pine Editor. That's in the tab at the bottom, which will open up this script. And what we do is we write code here and that generates drawings and strategies on the charts. But let's start with the pine editor and we're going to create a simple indicator based on moving averages. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a overlay equals true. And all that does is it means that the data will be shown on the chart rather than underneath it. And then I'm going to add in four lines to calculate two simple moving averages. So this is a variable, and then we're assigning that variable a value based on the SMA or the simple moving average of the closing price, which is the average of the last 24 prices. So right here, that'd be the average of these most recent days data. And then a slow moving average, which does exactly the same thing, but it does it for 200 data points. So for the previous 200 hours, what's the average price? We're then gonna plot them two lines the fast moving average and the slow moving average. The fast moving average is going to be blue and the slow moving average is going to be yellow. So once we've got them copied and pasted in, and if you're following along, you can copy and paste these from the blog post in the description. So add the chart. And as you can see, we've got some reasonably fitted moving averages following the recent price movements. We can save this chart. We'll call it my script. And then that's added at the top here. We can turn it on and off using the hide. And we could go in and edit settings. You can put inputs in and there's, and there's colors here which we can use to change the various settings for the indicator. Now, before we go any further, there's some fundamental concepts we need to understand about PineScript and how it works with TradingView. TradingView is built around series data. When you open up a chart, you're actually looking at a set of time periods with the price and volume plotted to that time. For any particular time period, you'll have the open price, the high for that period, the low price for that period, and then the closing price. You'll also have the amount of volume traded and then a timestamp. PyScript allows us to access that data directly, manipulate it, and then use it for indicators and strategies. When you write code in PyScript, that script will actually execute on every candle. So if you have a chart with 100 candles on it, the code will execute over and over again, calculating from the start to the finish of that period. One of PineScript's strongest features is its built-in functions. If you want to calculate the relative strength index or the RSI for a set period of time, you can do that just using the RSI function. And there's literally loads of these built in, particularly suited towards technical analysis and strategy development. Another thing to be aware of when you're coding is that you can use inputs. These allow you to go into the settings of an indicator and change values without actually digging into the code. It allows you to go in and tweak things much more quickly, and it's much more user-friendly for anyone else that's using the code. As standard, PineScript executes at the close of every candle. This means that the data isn't working in real time. We can actually change that by setting the calc on every tick value to true if we need to be using real life data. If you've used scripting languages before like Python or JavaScript, the format and the, the data types and operators will all seem very familiar. It's actually quite similar to Python in its feel and formatting. Statements use an indented format, which you can see here. Once we've done whatever we want to do with the series data, we can then use that to plot on a chart 
or to execute strategies. The strategy function allows us to use entries and exit points to backtest strategies. I'd say a trading view is much more suited towards the development and testing of strategies rather than it is from an execution platform. There's simply better things out there for that. And we'll touch on this later in the video where we'll look at migrating a strategy that was developed in PineScript over to a real world trading environment using the Exchange APIs. So to develop this into a trading strategy, we want to enter some entries and exits. Before we do that, we want to set a couple of variables at the top. Let's look at this. So we've got a PineScript tutorials example strategy one. We've got the overlay set to true still. Then we're going to put an initial capital amount of 1000 US dollars, a default quantity value of 100%. So on every trade that we be place in on this uh, strategy, we're going to be uh, using 100% of our capital. We've then got the fast moving average and a slow moving average. The only difference is I've moved these over to the exponential moving average because that's what I use more often. I don't, I don't want to create a condition for taking a long position. So my condition is going to be a crossover of the fast and slow moving averages. I don't want to set a couple of periods for the time zone being from the start of the bull run, which I put down as the 15th of December last year, and then not in trade. I don't want to um, trade if I'm already in a trade. So we're going to be checking that as well. Then we're going to add our trade condition. Then we're going to add our if statement for the trade condition, the time period and the not in trade we just set. We're then going to set a stop loss at 3% below the current low and a take profit level at 12% above the current high. And then we're going to set the long strategy and an exit strategy using the stop loss and the take profit levels. Finally, what we want to do is plot the two moving averages on the chart so we can better visualize what we're doing. So let's add these to the chart. We'll get rid of the previous example. And you can see not only have we got the yellow and blue lines now, but we've also got these uh, long entries and exit positions. As you can see, the net profit on this is 35%, just under 35%, which sounds really good, but essentially we're we're long in Bitcoin in the middle of a bull market, so you'd expect it to do pretty well. And compared to a buy and hold return of 47%, it's, it's looking less optimal. And you can see actually from, by just by looking at this, and this is what TradingView is really good at, you can visualize how the trading strategy is performing. And you can see here that we're missing out on huge amounts of the bull run. We don't have exposure from here all the way to here. And ideally, we want to capture this part of the bull run, but we don't want to be involved in this part. So let's go back into the fine editor and see what we can do to optimize this strategy. So let's just pause the video there for a second while we go through some more PineScript concepts. Now, often when we're designing these algorithms, we want to add code in the form of conditions and filters for getting in and out of positions. In this first example here, you can see we've added an open condition for the RSI or the relative strength index. If the RSI is above 40, then that condition is true. The second condition is a little bit more complex. What it's basically doing is looking at the number of trades now to the number of trades 24 hours ago. If that number is less than one, then it's true. We can use this to prevent over trading, limiting the number of trades we're taking out to one every 24 hours. We can do the same thing for exit strategies. Rather than just have a stop loss and a take profit level, we can design more complex strategies around how to and when to get out of a position. In this first example, we're using the 50 hour EMA or exponential moving average when that's below the 200 hour exponential moving average to close the position, or well, that condition is true. The second example is if the closing price on this bar is 5% less than the closing price on the previous bar, then that condition is true. And we can choose if we want both of these conditions to be met or either one of them using the OR operator in the if statement. We then simply execute strategy close or strategy close all to close the position. Another thing I want to go through is a simple smoothing algorithm, and I think this really shows how PineScript works. If we look at this closely, we can see we've taken an average of the closed price and the previous closed price, and then we've got that 0.5 factor, which we can adjust to either have more emphasis on the most recent price or the previous price. An exponential moving average uses a similar thing in a recursive pattern to work out that value. As I said previously, I think PineScript is most useful for visualizing chart patterns and strategies on a chart. Here's an example of how we can dynamically change the plotted line color and the background color of a chart based on if the close is above the previous close. Let's get back to the video. So let's create a new script, uh, trading strategy number two, 
And we've added a short title in here, which will be displayed up here. So it's not quite so garish. And also we've added in a commission value, which should allow for fees and slippage. I believe you can actually do fees and slippage separately if you want to. I've included three moving averages, the two exponential moving averages from earlier, and also a fast, simple moving average. I also want to use the average true range for the stop loss rather than the fixed percentage. So I'm going to calculate that here based on the last 14 bars. I'm then going to add two conditions for taking a position. The first is that I want the exponential moving average for the most recent data to be above the simple moving average. The reason for this is that I want the trend to be currently in our favor and the simple moving average works out a mean and the exponential moving average uses more emphasis on recent data. So we can use this little trick to get a feel for if the market is currently moving in our direction. The second is that I want the fast moving average to be above the slow moving average. So it's trending in our favor over a slightly longer time frame. And I'm going to set some exit conditions and I want the basically opposite of if true. The only difference is that on an exit, the market could be moving quite quickly if there's a real crash. So I want to use the close rather than the moving average. We're then going to set variables to say if we're in a trade or not and the time period is going to stay the same, which is the 15th of December onwards. We're going to add our conditions in for the entry using a stop loss at three times the average true range. And then we can do the same for the exit conditions using the in-trade variable and then exit condition one and two, which we defined up here. Finally, you want to plot the fast and slow moving average on a chart and also add a background color to show whether we're in a trade or not, which will help better visualize what we're doing. So let's add this to the chart. And straight away, using them background colors, you can see that this is capturing much more of the market moves. We're getting into a position straight away. We're holding it all the way up to the, the price crosses this 200 hour moving average, and then we're getting out. There's a little bit of chop here we could maybe optimize for later. Then we're getting into a position here and we're, we're holding it throughout the market move. From a net profit percentage, you can see this is almost 200% profit, which is above what a buy and hold return strategy would give you from the same period. The sharp ratios increased a lot as well. And I think there's a lot of value in this type of strategy because it captures the main momentum from the bull cycle, but it gets you out of a position before a market crash. You're effectively preserving your capital in the event of a disaster, which does happen occasionally in crypto markets. You can see this is a fairly standard fitted moving average strategy, where if the price is above the moving average, we stay long and then we close the position as soon as it passes over that line. In a trending market, these types of strategies will work really well. If the market starts going sideways, these will get destroyed. As we can see, somewhat from this kind of choppiness, that's not horrendous by any means, but if the market continued to go sideways, then a mean reversion strategy would actually be much more profitable than a trend following strategy. And we want to move our strategy in line with the current market conditions. Now let's look at how we'd migrate this to a production environment to carry out real trades. So in a real trading environment, I wouldn't want to keep all my funds on an exchange buying and selling Bitcoin. What I prefer to do is hold a majority of my assets in a cold storage wallet and then hedge my position when the market conditions turn negative. To do this, I could use something like FTX Perpetual Futures Contract to open up a short position when the EMA drops below this yellow line. Now I could do this manually using the alert function on TradingView to send me a notification. But what I prefer to do is have this scripted using the exchange APIs to execute then trades automatically. Once the position is hedged, I can go in at a later date and balance my spot to futures position. So essentially you wanna flip this strategy around so that we're selling on the exit condition. So to execute this, we could use the trading panel and connect to a broker that way. I wouldn't recommend that. I don't think that's robust enough for a serious trading system. What I recommend is you migrate something over to your own dedicated server. Most exchanges and brokers will have an API and we can connect to those directly either using Node.js or Python or whatever scripting language you're most familiar with. Here's an example script I put together. We've got two functions in JavaScript to calculate the simple and exponential moving averages. We're then gonna to connect to the exchange to get the latest data, just using a normal HTTP request. Once we've got that, we're gonna calculate the moving averages. We're gonna set up the conditions based on the trading view conditions we've had previously for the 24 hour and the 200 hour moving averages. And we're gonna execute an automated order to sell the BTC perpetual futures contract whenever those conditions are met. 
This is obviously very simplified and it's not tested or production ready, but it goes to show how you can take live data from an exchange, put that through a strategy developed in PineScript on TradingView, and then execute automated orders based on that strategy using the exchange APIs in the real world. The infrastructure to execute this at high volumes would look something like this. So we have a centralized bot with all our strategy logic. We have sanitized data coming in from the exchanges. And then we're sending off automated orders via an execution strategy, which on lower time frames is just as critical as the main strategy. We then have some security and backup functionality, and then some kind of platform or user interface to get into our trading and check analytics and optimize strategies. All the code that I've used here is open source, and I put a link to a more detailed blog post in the description. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.